Hello and welcome back everybody. Today, we're gonna to be going over everything you need to know to successfully prune back your table grapes that are growing in your garden. Pruning your grapevines can be somewhat intimidating, especially for new growers just getting started. And it doesn't have to be. It's actually one of the most simple tasks, as far as pruning is concerned, that you're gonna to need to perform on an annual basis to help to maintain not just vine health, but to get an appropriate fruit set, an abundance of healthy grape clusters, and limit pest or disease issues that can arise from an improperly pruned or completely ignored grapevine. All right, so here behind me, what we have is the flame seedless variety of table grape. This is one of the most popular varieties to grow for good reasons. It's a seedless grape, it's tasty, it's medium size, it's a vigorous grower, it puts off lots of bunches of grapes, they store well, and they're so easy to grow, you can use just about any pruning style really to reap a nice harvest. With that being said, I've thrown just about every type of pruning style at these two flame seedless vines that I have growing here in the back area of my garden. I've done cane pruning and spur pruning. These are the two most common ways to prune grape vines. I've even done some unconventional pruning, basically my own style, just to see what type of fruit set I would get. And you can tell that's exactly what I did over here last year, just by the structure of this plant growing over here. But generally speaking, cane pruning is how you're gonna go about pruning table grapes. When it comes to wine grapes, muscadines, spur pruning is generally the most commonly used. But there are some other factors to consider. So first off, you should probably do a quick search online to see what is the recommended pruning style for the variety that you have. But it could also be affected by the region and the weather patterns in your area. But as a general rule, the more you prune back off of the plant, the less production you're gonna get in a single year. And that can actually be a good thing as the plant's able to focus its energy into whatever bunches do grow on that plant for that year. So if you have less rather than too many bunches of grapes, they're gonna fully develop, they're gonna get larger, and they're gonna be very healthy. Now, after having implemented all types of different pruning techniques on my table grapes, the flame seedless here, my favorite is cane pruning and using a particular style known as double guillo. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today, very quick and easy. Before we get started here, just want you to pay attention to the fact that the plant is in full dormancy. So as we get into those cold temperatures, we're now in the winter growing season, deciduous plants like the grape will lose all their leaves. Once this happens, the plant goes dormant. It essentially shuts down and stops growing until the weather begins to warm up. This is the time when you wanna prune your grapes. So anytime between November and February, depending on where you're located, you just wanna make sure that you do it before the plant wakes up and starts to flush out new green growth. As that can shock the plant and harm it a bit, as you'll notice that if the plant's already waking up and you prune it, it's gonna be seeping out this milky sap substance from the inside. It's just not happy when you prune too late in the season. So I've got two flame seedless growing on this back trellis here. And you see this vine here, I've already pruned to the double guillo system. So first things first, you wanna start with a quality sharpened pair of Secateur's hand pruners. My favorite are the Foco 2s. And before you get going, you can quickly sanitize your blade if you've been cutting on other plants with uh, alcohol prep or just a little bit of alcohol on a rag. Then you wanna get the cutting blade as sharp as possible. And for that, I love using my Corona sharpening tool. It's very easy. You can get down in there in the crook and just kind of shimmy it back and forth and then give it a few swipes at a slight angle following the bevel of the cutting blade here. And that's all there is to it. You can give a couple swipes on the back as well. Don't put much pressure. We don't want to create a bevel, but it just helps to get rid of any buildup or gunk that's on there. And that is razor sharp. That's all it takes. So with cane pruning in the double guillo style, what we want to do is remove all of the old wood, except for just two canes, one on either side. We're also gonna leave two renewal spurs with two buds each on them to produce next year's growing canes. So as I'm looking at this grapevine here, what I wanna do is keep two canes that are growing on the top of the plant here. Now you should be at this level if you've had your grape growing in the ground for three years. But generally speaking, the first year, you're just gonna plant 
your one-year-old plant and let it grow. Now for illustrative purposes, let's say you just for the first year picked up some table grapes to plant in your yard. And you've got yourself a one-year-old plant, so you go ahead and plant it. What you're going to do is just allow that plant to grow throughout the growing season. And then before the second year's growing season begins, so while the plant is dormant throughout the winter months, what you're going to do is prune off any lateral side branching except for the most vigorous growth. And you're going to train that side branch to continually grow up. So you will tie this off along your trellis and remove any of those other lateral branches or shoots there. And at this point you could still leave a couple of lateral shoots up towards the upper end of the plant. And then after year two when the plant goes dormant, so before the third year of growing, you want to prune the plant to the height that you want. That's going to be determined by your preference and the size of your trellis. And you just want to leave two canes at the top or the crown of your grapevine. And after three years of growth, you should have yourself a rather mature vine where you will just do some maintenance pruning, removing any lateral shoots, any sprouts coming up at the base of your plant. And if you're utilizing the growing technique that I'm teaching you today, you're just going to be leaving two canes each year and a couple renewal spurs. It's just that easy. All right, so by the looks of this particular plant, I'm going to leave this as a cane and also this as a cane. And I'm going to be removing everything else off this plant. Just again, leaving a couple renewal spurs for next year's canes. So let's start off by removing this lateral growth here. So you see how much woody material we removed with just that one major cut. And here's another one right here. And I'll just, again, cut back some of this wood so that I can easily pull it off the trellis. Now look what we're left with in just about a minute's worth of work so far. So at this point, you just want to make sure that you definitely leave some renewal spurs for next year. I see right here we've got a beautiful candidate. We've got a bud right here and one up here. So we're going to cut just after that. Now this is going to be our renewal spur with two buds there. All right, so now I'm going to remove this branch here and this side shoot right here. So this is going to be one of our main canes. We'll leave that be for now. We'll move over to the right side of the plant. So this is the obvious candidate for our cane on this side. And we'll use this cane to prune back for renewal spurs. So we've got one bud here and we've got another node up here. So we're going to cut right above this node. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of this side shoot for that renewal spur as well. Just make sure we got what we need there. We're going to remove all of these shoots here. And there we are. It's coming together nicely. We've got our two canes here that we're now going to attach to our trellis. And before we do that, we can remove any of these shoots that have developed on these canes. Now the goal here with each one of these canes is to have 8 to 10 buds or nodes. This is going to be where the new shoots develop and produce our great bunches the upcoming year. Anything past 10 buds you can cut off. So what do we have here? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Leave one extra for good measure. And now's the time when you want to tie off your cane to your trellising system. And you can just wind it around and through your trellis or your wiring guide. And at this point, it's a good idea to also tie it down. You can use some plant tape, some grafting tape to hold it in place. I've even used old bike inner tubes, just cut them into strips and tied them down. So we'll do the same over on this cane and remove any side shooting there.
and we'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's take the tip off of there. And there you have it, guys, in just a couple minutes. So easy. We completely pruned the flame seedless table grape here. And we've got two canes. We've got two two bud renewal spurs to produce next year's canes that we'll then lay down and train just as we did this year. And both of these plants are now going to produce healthy, perfectly balanced fruit sets. Now, last year I pruned this grapevine to the double guillo system, which is why the canes have a younger appearance to them. So these are going to do excellent. And again, we've left some renewal spurs here for the plant to develop canes for next year's tie down and fruit set. And check out all these prunings, all this wood here can be utilized. We can make cuttings here and grow out dozens of new plants, exact replicas, clones of our grapevine we have growing back here. Another thing that can be intimidating to folks just getting started out growing grapes in their garden is the trellis. Now, as you can see, I have an unconventional trellis here, just sections of old hog panel. It works just fine. So when it comes to backyard growing, just know you don't need a picture-perfect wire trellis like what you'd see in a vineyard. If you want to go that route, more power to you, definitely go ahead and do that. But you can also just use whatever you have on hand to create a trellis. The main objective here is to be able to tie down your canes and have an area where the shoots can grow either up or dangle down and be supported by the trellis so it doesn't have to be complicated or expensive you can see all i did was drive down a couple t-posts made for fencing and again just use some extra hog panel scrap that i had laying around and if you do decide to run a guide wire this is the type of hardware that's going to help you to keep it taut as things continue to grow and expand and move around you just need a turnbuckle something to clamp onto a loop like this little loop hook and some of these clamps and that way if your guide wire gets loose you'll be able to tighten it up with the turnbuckle well that's going to do it for now my friends i truly do value your time appreciate you being here today so with that have yourself a good one until next time this is dan from plantabundance.com take care i'll be talking to you again soon mm -hmm.